Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for our workers meeting today. I thank the Lord for your faithfulness. Thank the Lord for all our workers, yourself included. And I pray that the Lord will reward your faithfulness, our faithfulness together in Jesus' name. And I pray that our service at work will not be in vain. Your service in particular, everything you are rendering to the Lord with all your heart, with all sincerity, nothing will go in vain in Jesus' name. His blessings will abide upon the work of your hand. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this workers' session. Thank you for your people. Thank you for keeping us healthy, keeping us alive, and keeping us interested in the work you have committed into our hands. We are praying, Lord, this work will prosper in everyone's hands in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, all that we need, resources we need for success in the work, your grant to everyone. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. We're coming to Second Timothy, chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 1 all through to verse 5. Here is the watch Paul the Apostle sent to Timothy by the leading, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Actually, as we read 2 Timothy, we need to understand this was the last epistle that Paul the Apostle wrote. And he wrote that to Timothy, and by extension, he's writing it to you and to me. Let's look at it now, chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. Verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Here is the commandment. Here is the mandate. Here is the word he gave him. Here is the word he's giving us. Verse 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse 4 And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou. Whatever others do, watch thou. Whatever others fail to do, watch thou. Whatever may consume the attention of other people. In your own case, Timothy. In your own case, my brother. In your own case, my sister. Watch thou. In all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Today we're looking at the word, our compelling task in the desperate world. Our compelling task, our compelling task in a desperate world. As you look at these words of Paul the Apostle, to you and to me, to our leaders, to our members, to our ministers, is giving us the charge. And he says, I charge you. And it's before God. And it's before the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our commander, the captain of our salvation, and the one who has called us and commissioned us. And he says, it's a desperate time in the world in which Timothy was living and in which Paul found himself. And we can say the same thing today. It's a desperate world and it's a desolate world and it's a dying world. But all the same, we have a task and we have a compulsory task, a compelling task. And we have something you know, we have to do that nothing you know, must stop us. As a Bible believer, 
the Christian must wake up and the Christian must see the urgency of our times. We must see the delicacy of our time. We must see the real thing happening and sinners are there and they must not die without the gospel and without the grace of God and without the word of salvation coming unto them. There are people who are backsliding and they, don't, they can't find their way. They're in the far country, like the prodigal son, like a prodigal daughter. And they cannot find their way. You can lend a helping hand. And you can show them the way. And if there's anything, any time to open the eyes of the blind, if there's any time to make the lame spiritually, emotionally wake up and rise up and go forth and do something, it is at this very time. We're called as soul winners. We're called as harvesters. We're called as preachers of the gospel. We're called as servants of God. And we need to draw near to the people and go to them with the 2020 vision. The vision is still there. And whatever is happening will not dim your vision, will not darken your vision, but your vision, 2020 vision, will still shine brighter and brighter until the very end in Jesus' name. You can tell with all the things happening, the rapture can take place anytime from now. After the rapture has taken place and the church is gone, there will be the great tribulation upon the earth. And then after that, after seven years of tribulation, Christ will come again the second time. He will judge those who have sinned. And then there will be the millennial reign. And then there will be the kingdom that will continue forever and ever into eternity. But between now and the rapture, and we do not know when the rapture will take place, between between now and the coming of the Lord, we need to do something. That's why we're looking at these verses today. And the topic is our compelling task in a desperate world. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, preach the word with all earnestness. We cannot be preaching and sleeping. and preaching and dozing. and preaching and daydreaming. and preaching and we're sluggish with all earnestness, with all excitement, and with all faith, and with all power, and with all pungency, we preach the word. Number one, preach the word with all earnestness. Number two, prevent the wondrous, agonizing emptiness. There are people who are wandering about. They wander from place to place. They wander in darkness. They wander with their eyes closed. They wander with their ears dull of hearing. They wander with all the listlessness and restlessness of the people who are not sure of where they are, where they're coming from, and where they're going. And here is our ministry to prevent the wondrous agonizing emptiness in eternity. Number three, persevere in the work of an evangelist. Persevere in the work of a soul winner. Persevere in the work of the preacher of the gospel. Persevere in the work of an evangelist. Let's come to point number one. Preach the word with all Earnestness. That's the calling he has given us. Look at uh, that passage we read together just now in Second Timothy chapter 4. Reading from verse 1. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop there for a moment. Paul the Apostle was bringing a charge. A charge to Timothy and a charge to you. What do I say? A charge to you and a charge to Timothy. Come back to chapter 2 of 2 Timothy and verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. It says, The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. That is what he told Timothy is telling you. The charge he gave Timothy is charging you. He says, Timothy, pass it on. The charge, pass it on. 
The commission, pass it on. The challenge, pass it on. The duty, pass it on. And the commission, the great commission that is coming to you, Timothy, you must pass it on to faithful men and faithful women who shall be able to teach others also. That same church is coming to you. And the church is before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, God will be a witness, I give you the church. The Lord will be a witness, I give you the church. And they will ask you, the Lord will ask you, the Father will ask you, the Savior will ask you, what did you do with the church, with the commission that was given unto you? Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the living, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. What does that mean? He will judge the quick. He will judge those who are alive. And he will judge those who are dead at his appearing. When Christ comes at the rapture to take the saints away, all the believers who have died, they will rise up. And those who are alive, it will change them. In a moment of time, we shall all be changed. That's what it means. The people that will be alive, and then they'll be quickened, they'll be caught up, and then everyone will come before the Lord to receive his reward. He will judge, he will reward, he will examine, he will evaluate our work, the living and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom. Now he tells us as a result of that, because of that, because he's going to examine the occupation he gave us, the assignment he gave us, the assignment and the work he gave us, the duty and responsibility he gave us, is going to find out, did you evangelize? Did you visit? Did you help? Did you teach? Did you lead? Did you enlighten those who are in darkness? Did you do the work I gave you to do because of that? Because it will examine. Because it will judge. Because it will evaluate. Now, preach the word. Preach the word. That is a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not if. If I don't do that, what else can I do? Nothing else. Nothing else. Everything you do is to amount to preaching the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season. That's when it's convenient, when it's all right, when you are strong, when you are happy, when the climate is all right, when the rain is appropriate, when the sun is appropriate, when all the surrounding is convenient and it's comfortable. It says, do it in season. I bowed when things are not convenient, when things are not comfortable, and when it appears it's out of season. I want it to be dry, but it's wet. I want it to be wet, but it's dry. I want it to be fresh, but it's dreary. It says, out of season. Preach the word. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, without long suffering and doctrine. Here the Lord is telling us that this is what we have to do. It's giving us a commission. It's giving us a charge. It's giving us a commandment. And it says that charge must keep on carrying out. We're coming to First Timothy chapter 6, reading from verse 13. First Timothy chapter 6, Verse 13, it says, I give thee charge in the sight of God. You see that again, Paul was not negligent. He wasn't saying, Timothy, can I advise you? Timothy, can I give a suggestion? Timothy, can I share some opinions with you? No, never. This is a charge. And this is a commission. And this is a duty. This is a great assignment that he gives to you and he gives to me. 
and he calls it a charge. Verse 13, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickness all things, and before Christ Jesus, or before Pontius Pilate, witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment, keep this charge, keep this commission without spot or rebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice something there. Paul did not know. Timothy did not know when Christ will come. You do not know. I do not know when Christ will come. Nobody knows when Christ will come to take the saints away. And so he said, Timothy, the rapture can come any time. Appearance of Christ may come at any time. And therefore, between now and that appearing of the Lord, between now and that time of the rapture, between now and the time we we'll see him, you will keep this charge, you will keep this commission, you will keep on doing this duty, you will keep on excelling in this assignment without spot or unrebukable. Re Look at this. Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on doing it. Keep on preaching the word. Keep on being a witness. Keep on being a preacher. And remember, you do it with all earnestness. You do it with all your zeal. You do it with all your intelligence. You do it with all the passion you have. You do it with all the intelligence you have. And you do it persuasively. Come to Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 10. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's saying when Christ comes, every one of us individually will go before the Lord. Every one of us will appear before the Lord. We will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The beamer seat of Christ. Where he will evaluate what we have done. Where he will give rewards as to what we have done. And he says, because we know that day is coming. A day of reckoning. A day when we'll tell the Lord, here is what I did. This is what I did. You gave me five talents. All the five talents I made use of profitably for the kingdom. I had two talents. All the two talents I made use of profitably for the kingdom. And you gave me the ability. You gave me the chance. You gave me the skill. And you gave me the advantage and the privilege of ministering. And I did. The Lord is saying, we must do all that because we know when he comes, the judgment of God, the evaluation of God as to what we did when we are here on earth, all that will come. Verse 10, for we must all, without exception, I will not send for you. You will not send for me. You will stand by yourself and you will stand before the Lord. And he's going to ask, how did he do it? What did you do? The work of the Lord. The work I committed to your hand. The charge I gave you. The evangelism. The discipleship. And the follow up. And the counseling. And the visiting of those who are in need. And the helping of those who are helpless. And walking and loving them as I have loved you. How did you do it? You must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone, underline that in your Bible, everyone, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he has done, whether they be good or bad. Whether they be profitable or unprofitable. Whether they be advantageous or disadvantageous. Whether they were helpful or they were hindering. Whether they made for the progress of the church or for the retrogressing retreat of the church. The Lord will find out. And you can find out now. You can take inventory now. And you can examine yourself now. 
how are you doing it? What have you done? And now our siege been done. The Lord is going to examine us on that final day. Why don't you examine yourself now? Look at verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. Knowing therefore the judgment coming, the evaluation coming on the one side for the saints of God. On the one side for the servants of God. On the one side for the workers in the vineyard. On the one side the preachers of the gospel. Knowing the terror of the Lord. If the Lord will say the wicked servant. The terror of the Lord. That's Lord for servant. The terror of the Lord. Knowing what the Lord will say. Will persuade men. And first of all we have to persuade ourselves. I must go out and do the work. I must pick up that phone and do the work. I must pick up that instrument and do the work. I must pick up that tool and do the work. I must touch that life. I must invite that life. I must enlighten that person. I must cheer up that person. I must encourage that person. I must preach. I must teach that individual. That's what the Lord is saying. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Knowing the terror on sinners who are not born again. For it's appointed unto men who wants to die. And after this the judgment. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. But who are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your own consciences. He wants us to do the work of the Lord, and He wants us not to waste any time. He wants us not to be negligent in any way. Uh, look at this in uh, uh, First uh, Kings chapter 19. I'm reading to you from First Kings chapter 19. There are some people who are negligent. There are some people who will be giving excuses. There are some people who are not doing what they ought to do. First, first Kings, uh, please, uh, chapter 20. First Kings, chapter 20. I'm reading from verse, uh, from verse 39. First Kings, chapter 20, verse 39. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, The servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. The Lord has given us a commission. Preach the word. The Lord has given us a charge. Teach the word. The Lord has given us a work to do. Compel them to come in. The Lord has given us an assignment. Occupy until I come. And make sure that sinners are brought into the kingdom. And when they are brought into the kingdom, they are preserved in the kingdom. Watch over them, intercede for them, pray for them, preach to them, counsel them, encourage them, and make sure that they continue in doctrine and in fellowship. Now in verse 40, and as the servant was busy here and there, he was gone. He said, I was careless. He said, I was negligent. As the servant was busy here and there, he was gone. The Lord is one in us. Don't be so busy here and there, working on nothing, doing nothing, and just doing what you've done before, and just going over this and that. As thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, so shall thy judgment be, as thyself has decided it. You will not be brought to judgment for carelessness on the final day in Jesus' name. We will do the work of God, we will keep the charge, and everything we ought to do at the right time, the right person will do it in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, 
I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. On the judgment day, on the reckoning day, if I preach not the gospel, if I'm busy here and there, if I neglect my church, if I neglect my commission, if I do not do what I ought to do on that day of reckoning, on that day of judgment, on that day of final evaluation of the work I have done, if I do not do it, woe unto me. Look at verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, if I do it wholeheartedly, if I do it cheerfully, if I do it earnestly, if I do it persuasively, if I do it pungently, if I do it excitedly, if I do it willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, not if I preach the gospel, when I preach the gospel, not if you preach the gospel, when you preach the gospel, you will preach the gospel. In the day, in the night, you will preach the gospel. At every opportunity, you will preach the gospel. And even during this difficult time, you will preach the gospel. In season and out of season, you will preach the gospel. When it's convenient, when it's not convenient, you will preach the gospel. It says, what's my reward then? I'm very late that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Not charging anything. Freely you have received and freely give that I abuse not my power, my privilege, my opportunity in the gospel. For though I am free from all men, yet I make myself servant unto all. He says, as I'm preaching the gospel, I'm not going around emphasizing my right. I'm not going around claiming my right. I'm not going around demanding this to be done to me and that to be done for me. It says, I make myself servant unto all. And then he goes on to say that I might gain the more. So he tells us in verse 22, to the weak became I as weak. You find anybody sick around you there? Anybody that you have heard is weak? Call them and strengthen them, and to the weak speak to them words of comfort, words of encouragement, words of faith, and words of uh, restoration unto the Lord. It says that I might gain the weak. I am made all things unto all men, that I might by all means save some. By all means save some. By all means save some. This is the time and it's urgent that we go ahead and save the people that need salvation. If we don't do it in time, the harvest might be wasted. If we don't do it in time, the hearts of the people might be hardened. That brings us now to point number two. Point number two is in Second Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, we're reading from verses 3 and 4. It says in verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their, after their own law shall they heed to themselves, teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. We're living at such a time. Have you noticed as you interact with people, especially people who are not in the Lord, especially people who do not love the Word of God, especially people whose mind and heart and whose purpose and whose concentration is not on the Word of God. Have you noticed all they want to hear? They want to hear about this. They want to hear about that. They want to hear about this other thing. They want to see what, what happened to so-and-so. What happened in that state? What happened in that community? Uh, we're hearing of something mysterious. We're 
are hearing of this and that. And except you speak about that, they're not interested. You say, I want to talk to you about your own salvation. I want to talk to you about your own life. I want to talk to you about your own relationship with the Lord. I want to talk to you about the truth of the coming of the Lord. No, they don't want to hear about that. These are difficult times and these are dangerous times and these are times when people are turning their ears away from the truth and they turn them onto fables. They rather listen to a lie. And if uh, they, they watch uh, something, it doesn't give them enough of all the lies they want to hear, they turn to another thing. If they don't get it here, they want to get it another place. They'll be wondrous and wondrous and wondrous about. Actually, that's the prophecy of the Word of God. If you look at Amos chapter 8, Amos chapter 8, the people at the latter time of the near the end of the world, they'll be wandering about. They wonder for this. They want to hear something. They're looking for a vision. They're looking for a prophecy. They're looking for as prophet so and so spoken, as pastor so and so spoken, as a philosopher so and so spoken, as such and such as he spoken. They want a fake prophecy. They want false prophecy. And they're wondering about. Look at Amos chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 11. Amos chapter 8, reading from verse 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord. Here is the word of the Lord. Here is God himself talking. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. A famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Although people might say, I'm hearing something, I'm hearing something. Is that something, the word of salvation? Is it the word of righteousness? Is it the word of restoration? Is it the word of redemption? Is it the word of right relationship with the Lord? Is it the word of getting ready for the coming of the Lord? But it says there will be a famine. A famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Verse 12. For they shall wander from sea to sea. And from north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. They seek it in vision, they shall not find it. They seek it in prophecy, they shall not find it. They seek it in uh, projections, they shall not find it. They seek it in philosophies of people and uh, things, what's out of the minds of the people, and they shall not find it. I pray you will not be a wanderer. I will not be a wanderer. Your wife will not be a wanderer wondering about. Your husband will not be a wanderer. Your children will not be wondering about looking for the word of God when the word is near them. When they can easily hear the word, the word of salvation and the word that will strengthen them. The word of strength. Let's look at Jeremiah. It tells us that days come the days are coming when people just wander about and they will not hear the right word because they have itching ears. I'm reading Jeremiah chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 14. We're reading from verse 10. It says, Thus says the Lord unto these people, Thus have they loved to wander. Thus have they loved to wonder. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. The Lord does not accept the wonders. The Lord does not appreciate the wonders. The, the Lord does not bless the wonders. The people who turn their ears away from the truth of the word. They turn their ears away from sound doctrine. They turn their ears away from the word of repentance and the word of salvation. And they turn their ears unto false prophets. The Lord does not accept them. They are wondrous. He will now remember their iniquity and visit them and visit their sins. That's why 
you as a believer. That's why you as a worker, you want to preserve or prevent the wandering, agonizing, empty wandering of the people who are wandering about. Look at Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests, uh, the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? You see what he's saying there? He's saying the prophets are prophesying falsely. And that's what uh, Paul was telling Timothy. That's what the apostle is telling us. He's saying the time will come. And this is the time. The time has now come. When people will not endure sound doctrine. They will not appreciate sound doctrine. When you talk of salvation, they say that's dull. When you talk of repentance, they say that's harsh. You talk about uh, salvation. You talk about redemption. They say that's not what I, what I want to hear, they will turn their ears from the truth and they will turn unto fables. I pray you will not be like that. Your family will not be like that. None of us will be like that in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes some people have even been born again before. They gave their lives to the Lord but not because of these last days and what is happening in these last days. They are wondering about. It tells us in uh, First Timothy chapter Chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5, the people who knew the Lord, the people who are children of God, the people who had faith in God, but now they have abandoned the first faith and they have abandoned their faith and their security and their salvation in the Lord. And now they are wondering about, I will not be a wanderer. You will not be a wanderer in Jesus' name. Look at First Timothy chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 12. Having damnation because they have cast off the first faith. They add the first faith, the first love, the first trust, and the first commitment unto the Lord. They had given their lives to the Lord. They became believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were walking the straight path in a narrow way that leads to heaven. But now in verse 12, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. What are they doing now? Verse 13, and without they learn to be idle, wandering from house to house. They learn to be idle, wandering from house to house. Uh, a worker should not be like that. You as a worker, you as a minister, you as a servant of the Lord, if the people are wondering about and you are wondering about, how do you help the other people who are wondering? If you are not stable, if you are not solid, if you are not sound, if you are not committed, if you are not uh, steadfast in the Lord, how do you have the people who are wondering? It says all these other people, they have cast off the first faith. Are you checking up on our members? Are you, are you checking up on the people of God who have been part of this, our church, and part of your district, and part of your group, and part of your region, and part of your state, and they are being with us as children of God, and they have the first conviction. And they were converted. They were children of God. And they had the false faith. They believed in the Lord. And you could see. Because their life was totally changed and transformed. But now, do you know whether they are wondering or not? Do you know whether they have left the false faith or not? That's why we are there. That's why we are workers. And at such a time like this, while people are wandering about from house to house, they are wandering on the YouTube, they are wandering from site to site, they are wandering on the internet. They are wandering from false prophet to false prophet. They are wandering from China to Japan. And they are wandering from the U.S. They are wanting to, wandering to Italy. They are wandering here and there. They want to find out how, what can I take? What can I do? Come to them and teach, and teach them and touch their lives so that the people of God will not be wanderers. We will not be wanderers anymore in Jesus' name. Say good amen over there. Thank you very much. Amen. Look at Jude. 
I'm reading here from verse, uh, I'm reading from verse 12. Jude, reading from verse 12. Let us prevent the wandering of the people. That's a major work at this time now. That's the charge the Lord is giving us at this time now. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Exhort them. Encourage them. Enlighten them influence them, stabilize them, so that they will not be wondering about because the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine, when they will be wondering about and they will turn their ears onto fables, but you will do the work of an evangelist and the work of a teacher and the work of a pastor and you will make the people sound and safe and steadfast in the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at Jude. I'm in only one chapter. Jude chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. These are sports in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about with winds, trees whose fruits with the earth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Look at this, verse 13, reaching waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, and then it says, wandering stars, wandering stars. That's why we're coming to the lives of the people now, before they wander too far, wandering here and there, into the ditch, into the pit, into the pitfall, and wandering into falsehood, and wandering into error, wandering stars. If they wander and nobody reaches them, and nobody touches them, and nobody helps them to come back and become stabilized in the truth, then what will happen is to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. I pray our people will not believe a lie. I pray our converts will not believe a lie. I pray our people will not believe false doctrine flying about everywhere, in every place, in Jesus' name. If they're not going to wander about and wander into destruction and wander into damnation, you must do something. You must check up on them. Even if they're not wandering, check up on them. How stabilized are they? How solid are they? How steadfast are they? How committed are they to the truth and to the word of God? Well, even in the last days and in the last days, perilous time shall come. Look at First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, in the latter times, and if these are not the latter times, what other latter times do we have? Look at everything happening, and look at the pestilences, look at the pandemic, in the latter times, at these dangerous times, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. At the, at the time of lock, locking down and shutting down, I were not able to all come to the sanctuary like we used to. I were not congregating like we used to. People can become careless. People can become forgetful. And people can depart away from the truth and away from the faith. And you know, Satan fills the vacuum. If there's vacuum in somebody's heart, there's vacuum in somebody's life, Satan comes in and he fills the vacuum. That's why it says now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, times in which we're living, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and to the doctrines of devils. Doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a heart iron. That's why we rise up and do the work he has given us to do. If we don't, there are people who will be snatched away and taken away and driven away and drawn away from the truth. It happened to the Galatian believers in Galatians chapter 1. 
Galatians chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I marvel those who have been taught the way of the Lord and the watch of the Lord, those who have been taught the truth of the gospel that we need to be born again, those who have been taught the truth of the gospel that the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin, those who have been taught the gospel that without holiness no man shall save the Lord, those who have been taught the gospel that in Christ is our salvation, in Christ is our sufficiency, in Christ is our security. Security. In Christ is a sanctification. In Christ is a supply. Now they're going astray because we're not meeting together and because we're not able to congregate together. I marvel, Paul the Apostle said that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of God, into the grace of Christ, unto another gospel. We have all always known that the rapture will take place before the great tribulation. But now there are people who have been drawn away and they are confused. When is the rapture going to take place? Is it not the great tribulation already? Has not the Antichrist come already? Are they not going to pass something to their body and then they have the mark of the Antichrist and then after that, after that, the rapture will come. They are being removed from the grace of God. They are being removed from sound doctrine unto another gospel. Verse 7, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and will pervert, will pervert, will corrupt the gospel of Christ. But do we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which, you, which were preached unto you? Let him be a cause. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a curse. I pray our people will not be accursed in Jesus' name. And I pray that we, the ministers, we, the workers, will not be accursed in Jesus' name. That's why we should rise up and do our work. That's why we should rise up and make sure that our members, our people, and even those who are not our members, will reach out to them and they establish in the truth and they'll not be drawn away. They'll not be swept away from their feet in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We we'll come now to point number three. Uh, persevere in the work of an evangelist. Persevere in the work of an evangelist. We're coming to Second Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 5. But thou, watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Here the Lord was calling on Timothy through Paul the Apostle and he said, Timothy, you know what? You need to do the work you have been assigned to do. And those of us who are children of God and we are workers, those of us who are members of the, of the working team and we are ministers of the gospel, ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must remember what the Lord is calling on us to do. Look at that verse 5 again. It says, Watch thou in all things. Number one, watch thou in all things. We need to watch. We'll watch over our own souls. We'll watch over our members. And we'll watch over the heritage of the Lord on over the work and the flock of the Lord. Not only that, endure affliction. There'll be some challenges. There'll be some difficulties. Now, because we're not able to move from this place to that place and touch other people's life, I need data. I need this. I need that. Before I can get to that individual, get whatever you need to get and get every equipment you need to get so you can touch their lives. If there are difficulties, if there are hardships, if uh, there's not enough to take, not enough to wear, not enough to eat, endure affliction. Don't allow the affliction to hinder you from doing the work you ought to do. Then he says, do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of a soul winner. Do the 
work of a witness unto the Lord. And then make full proof of your ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. Uh, uh, very quickly, let's look at that. Number one is to watch. Number one is to watch. It tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 28. Acts chapter 20. Remember, it's not uh, just for the overseer, it's for you. It's not just for the preacher, it's for you. You're a preacher too. Remember, this is not for them and for Timothy alone. This is for you. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 28, it says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself. First of all, about your own life, make sure you're standing in the faith. Make sure you stand firm and make sure everything you believe, that sound doctrine, good doctrine, biblical doctrine, scriptural doctrine, that you're still believing today. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Now, number two, and to all the flock. And to all the flock, let no member accuse you. You didn't even call me. I heard you called so and so three times. I heard that you shared with so and so five times. And you didn't even give me a single call. Make sure that you have all the people there, all the members under your supervision, all the members that you are watching over, all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which is purchased, which he has purchased with his own blood. It says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, and speaking erroneous things, and speaking false things, speaking unscriptural things, to draw away disciples after the opinion, after themselves. In verse 31, therefore watch. In verse 31, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn each one night and day with tears. He wants us to watch. I pray you'll watch. I will watch. You'll keep on watching. Watch, watch over yourself. No false doctrine comes in. No false idea comes in. No false prophet comes in. And no false prophecy comes in. Watch. We're looking in at 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verses 15 and 16. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself Holy unto them. Meditate upon the word you are hearing. Meditate upon the commission the Lord has given us. Meditate upon the charge he has given us. Meditate upon the assignment and the duty, the responsibility he has given us. Meditate upon the sound doctrine of the word of God. Meditate upon these things and uh, give thyself wholly, completely unto them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. Look at verse 16. Take heed unto thyself, the same watch. Take heed unto thyself, your character, watch. Your behavior, watch. Your doctrine, watch. Your utterances, watch. Your attitude, watch. Your lifestyle, whether you are lazy or you are up and doing, watch. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. First Thessalonians chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 6. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 6. It says, Therefore, let us not sleep. Therefore, let us not sleep just because you are by yourself and you're alone by yourself. Don't sleep too much. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. 
we have a work to do. Let us watch and be sober. We have souls to watch over. Let us watch and be sober. We have souls to give account for. Let us watch and be sober. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 2. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen those things that remain. Be watchful and strengthen those things that remain, that are ready to die. Get to them before they backslide. Get to them before they pass out. Get to them before they give up their faith. It says, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, that are ready to die. Then it says, for I have not found thy work perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent, if therefore thou shalt not watch, if thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief suddenly, at a time you are not expecting, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Number one, then Paul the Apostle told Timothy, and Timothy is instructing us, and the word of God in Second Timothy is enlightening us. Watch thou in all things, not only that, in deal affliction. In deal affliction. There are people that do not know that in the work of God, there are things for us to endure. In the assignment the Lord has given us, there are things for us to endure, to keep people saved keep us standing and to keep people on the word of God we must endure there are things to endure Second Timothy chapter 1 in Second Timothy chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 8 be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Endure afflictions. Be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. Whatever challenges come because you are preaching the gospel, whatever difficulties, pressures come before you because you are preaching the gospel, endure that in Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. It says in chapter 2 verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Difficulties endure, hardness endure, the roughness of the road endure, the heat of the day endure, the challenges of ministry endure, and the price you have to pay to touch people's lives and to make them stand and to make them stable, steadfast in the work of God endure. Let's look at verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things. You see, Paul the Apostle was not a preacher that will say, do as I say and not as I do. You endure. But I'm going to dodge every difficulty and every challenge. No, Paul said, Timothy, endure. And you can see me. And I endure triumphantly. And I conquer every challenge that comes to me. He says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Why? That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I endure you endure, we all endure, and the work of the Lord will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. The work of the Lord will prosper in your hands. You will not labor in vain in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 10. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, Purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecution, afflictions, which came upon me at Antioch, at Iconium. And then it says at Lystra, what persecution 
I endured. He said, Timothy, I'm telling you, I've gone through that same road, I've gone through that same way, endure. If you're going to succeed as an evangelist, endure affliction. As a teacher, endure the affliction. As a pastor, endure the affliction. As a counselor, endure the affliction. As an intercessor, endure the affliction. As a counselor, as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, you must endure. Look at verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, shall endure persecution. Let's come back to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 5 here. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Who's an evangelist? An evangelist is the one that takes the word of God to every place, takes it to individuals, and takes it to uh, congregations of people. There's somebody we're told where, where that is mentioned to us as an evangelist in the New Testament. Let's look at Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, so that you know what the Lord is saying, what you are supposed to do as an evangelist. Acts chapter 21, we're reading verse 8. Acts chapter 21, reading from verse 8. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist into the house of Philip the evangelist. What what did Philip do as an evangelist? Let's come to Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. When there was opportunity, when there was no lockdown, when there was no shutdown, Philip had the opportunity and he went and he told the whole city the gospel and he took up that whole city and presented the gospel unto them in verse 6 and the people was one accord gave here unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. That time will come again when you can have crusade, open air meeting, open air campaign and then you reach out to the gospel and you give up the word of salvation salvation and the word of healing and the word of power and many people will come to know the Lord and great miracles will happen in Jesus name and unclean spirits were told in verse 7 for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were uh, paralyzed that had uh, paralysis or palsies and that were lame were healed and there was much joy great joy in that city but understand the evangelist is not only preaching to crowds the evangelist can can also reach the individual, can also touch the life of the individual. We're coming to that same chapter 8 of Acts, and we're reading from verse 25, and it says, And they, when they had testified, preached the word of the Lord, and returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. That's the, that's the work of the evangelist. Now we come to verse 26. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is a desert. And he arose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an individual, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, honor Candace, the queen, queen of, it, of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to, for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, Reg Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said 
unto Philip, go near, unto Philip the evangelist, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, one person, and had him reach the prophet Isaiah and said unto him, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he, only one man, only one individual said, How can I, one person, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Only one person. Verse 35, Then Philip the evangelist opened his mouth, and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. That's the work of the evangelist. Do the work of the evangelist. When you are able to speak to one individual, go ahead and do the work of an evangelist. You are able to speak to a whole family, go ahead, do the work of an evangelist. You are able to have a crusade, go ahead and do the work of an evangelist. We are coming back to Second Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from, verse, reading from verse 5. It says, but watch thou in all things, Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. You have a ministry, make full proof of thy ministry. Do that work. Keep it fresh. Keep it full. Be faithful to that ministry. Touch the lives of people. Turn people around for the better. Let the power of the gospel work in their lives as you reach them. And do not stop until you've done everything you have to do. And you make full proof of your ministry. What's the Lord telling us? Look at Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 17. Colossians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17. It says, say to, and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Say to Archippus, if I knew your name, I'll mention your name here. If I were to talk to you as an individual, I'll come to you right there and mention your name and say, my brother, the Lord has sent a message unto you. My sister there, the Lord has sent a message unto you. And what's the message the Lord has sent to you? He says, I shall say unto you, take heed to the ministry which you have received of the Lord and fulfill it. Fulfill your ministry. You will not stop your journey halfway in Jesus' name. You will not stop the work of God halfway in Jesus' name. Every life you have to touch, you will touch. Everyone you have to encourage, you will encourage. Everyone you have to heal by the power of God, you will heal in Jesus' name. Everyone you have to send encouragement to, you will send and encouragement to them in Jesus' name. Affliction will not stop you. Pandemic will not stop you. Persecution will not stop you. Walking and, you know, making ends meet will not stop you. Going out and coming in will not stop you. Being busy here and there will not stop you. And all the challenges of life that may come to you as an individual, as a family man, as a family woman, as a child will not stop you. Every Everything the Lord has ordained, you will do, and you will make full proof of your ministry in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, reading from verse 24. But none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Pandemic, no, it doesn't move me. Persecution, it doesn't move me. The winds are blowing, it doesn't move me. The sea is roaring, it doesn't move me. And and uh, we have commotion here and difficulties there. None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish the work, the cause, and the duty, and the responsibility, and the work of the evangelist with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. It says, nothing moves me 
I'm charging on, I'm moving on, and I will continue until the work is done. We're looking at Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, continue. The work is there, continue. The work is to be done, continue. The word is to be preached, continue. It says in Revelation chapter, chapter 2, verse 25, but that which ye, which ye have already, hold fast till I come. That which you have already, hold fast until I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, unto the end, you'll keep your assignment, your work, your duty, Unto the end in Jesus' name. He that overcometh, you'll overcome all your challenges, all your difficulties, all the afflictions, all the persecutions, all the distractions, everything you'll overcome in Jesus' name. And you will be more than a conqueror. Say, I will be more than a conqueror. You will in Jesus' name. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, unto the end, unto the end, unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. It tells us in verse 28, and I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that has an ear to hear, who is that? That's you. That's you. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God says unto the churches. What's he saying? What has he said? I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, encourage, enlighten, and influence people with long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lost shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But don't be like them, don't go astray like them. Don't wonder about like them. Watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. The grace of God abides in your life. And the Spirit of God so energize you and so baptize you and so fill you, infiltrate you that you'll be strong You'll be powerful and you'll move on unto that, unto the fulfillment of the great heavenly vision for your life, in your life, in Jesus' name. And by all means, you'll touch many lives and many lives will become stable and steadfast and solid in the way of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Your ministry will be fulfilled as you draw many, many people unto the Lord and make them remain stabilized in the Lord until the final day. Why don't you rise up and commit all this to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I thank you for the charge. I thank you for the commission. I thank you for the enablement. I thank you for your grace. And I know your grace is sufficient for me. Brother, I saw, sister, I saw. This is not the time to go to the kitchen. This is not the time to, you know, go and pick up this and pick up that now. Act as if we were here together in the sanctuary. And then you commit these few minutes now. You commit yourself to the Lord completely, to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has given you a work to do. And say, Lord, I will do it. Preach the word. Preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the word of salvation to sinners. Preach the word of steadfastness to believers. Preach the word of encouragement to those who are discouraged. Preach the word. Preach the word of stability to those who are wondering about. Preach it in love. Preach it in tenderness. Preach it with care. 
preach it persuasively and preach it convincingly and preach it lovingly that they will want to stand in the truth of the word of God. Don't wander away yourself from the truth. Some doctrine rapture takes place it's going to take place before the great tribulation don't wander away from that truth the lord is coming he will definitely come he will take the bride out he will take his ambassadors ambassadors out before the wrath of god comes upon this world don't wander away from the sound doctrine don't wander away to false prophets and false philosophers don't wander away to false uh, people who are spreading false news. They even warn us, uh, you know, on the internet, you know, people are bringing this, are bringing that, beware. And don't wander away into solutions that are not solutions at all, that will destroy your life. Don't be a wanderer. Don't be a prodigal son, a prodigal, a prodigal daughter. Don't be a prodigal minister, a prodigal preacher. Don't wonder, be steadfast in the truth and the word of the Lord. And then help the people who are wandering. Help the people, help your members, help the children of God. And then make up your mind, you have the grace of God. You will watch in all things. You will watch in all things. You will endure affliction. It's just a little affliction for a short time. The shutdown, the difficulties. That is, uh, you know, here and there, you will endure as a matured person. You will endure as a soldier. You will endure as a disciplined person. You will endure as a person that will not complain or murmur. And you will do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Do the work of bringing individuals to the Lord. And do the work of bringing families and linking families to the Lord. Do you know you can tell people they can link up with the message of salvation, the message we're preaching, the Bible, study, the revival, everything we're doing. You can send message to every, to people around you and people that you know. In fact, all those people in your contact list, you can send message to them. Listen, 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 and then after they are listening, check up on them again. That's doing the work of an evangelist and make full proof of your ministry. The Lord will reward you on the final day in Jesus name. Even from now, even from now, your reward will not fail in Jesus name. Amen. Everyone there, let's pray together. Now Father, in the name of Jesus, we we'll thank you for your word of encouragement, for your word of upliftment, for your word of challenge, for your word that commissions us again to go and do the work you have given us to do. Lord, I pray for every worker. I pray for this, my brother. I pray for this, my sister. I pray for everyone that has listened today and everyone that was still listening. I pray, Lord, we will not fail in the work you have committed into our hands in Jesus' name. Lord, grant your people sufficient grace, abundant grace, that this work will not fail in our hands in Jesus name. Lord I pray more strength for everyone more courage for everyone and more strength and power to endure to everyone in Jesus name. All the resources of heaven that we need to do this work without failing and to de do this work without faltering, to do this work without looking back all those resources give to everyone in Jesus name and I pray Lord that your grace will make every one of us to fulfill our ministry to fulfill our calling and when that day will come the day of the coming of the Lord the rapture and the saints of God will go to heaven and he will examine us and he will, he will evaluate what we have done none of us will miss our rewards in Jesus name once again Lord keep your people healthy keep your people happy and keep your people holy keep them heavenly and keep them ready for that coming day in Jesus name all resources that they need power strength everything they need give even to everyone and the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone. Thank you Lord because we know you have answered. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Let me hear your amen. You can hear my amen. Amen. 
the goodness of the Lord continue with you. And during this time of being so far apart, a lockdown, shutdown, isolation, whatever, I pray that this time will soon be over. I'm looking forward to seeing you face to face. And the joy of the Lord abide with you until then. Keep on doing the work of God and keep on prospering in the work of God. All your needs are supplied. There's nothing to worry about. You don't have any problem. The solution of the Lord is with you and you'll always have the sufficiency of all things in Jesus' name.